Every morning, anything up to six days a week, these workers in Bulgaria get up before the crack of dawn. They are just a few of the many thousands who make up the country's garment industry. Most, if not all, earn poverty wages. Global competition from low-cost producing countries in Africa, Asia and Turkey mean that Eastern European factories remain under pressure to drive down costs. It's 5.30 and we're in front of one of the biggest garment factories in Europe. In Bangladesh, textile workers are on strike for better pay. Here in Bulgaria, they keep on working despite being on extremely low wages. Many international brands have outsourced their production to Bulgarian businesses like Pirintex. The company produces a lot of items for Hugo Boss. The workers here are exceptionally fast, needing just five seconds to hem a trouser leg. The pressure on employees is intense. Sources in the factory told us that few workers are able to meet their production quota. Mariana supervises the workload. The quota is fed into 1,700 computer tablets, one for each workstation. With this tablet system, we control the whole production process. It's the best system we've ever had. With those tablets, we have the possibility to control everything. Each single activity done by the employees, each ongoing operation, the time needed by the seamstress to execute a specific task, as well as the method she uses. Thanks to this system, we have full control. Perintex is located in the small southern Bulgarian town of Gotsi Delshev, the heart of the country's garment industry. We met some workers from the factory. Initially, they were reluctant to speak, but eventually agreed to talk about their pay and working conditions. Kostadin is a union leader. On average, workers are only able to finish about 60% of their required tasks every time. Depending on their seniority, the average net wage is between 320 and 350 euros. Did Bulgarian politicians pass laws for human beings or was it for robots? We work non-stop. With this system, our employer has more or less been able to implement a forced system of work. My father and my mother live and work abroad. They left Bulgaria over 20 years ago, but still, even at my age now, they feel obliged to help me and they pay half of all my outgoings here in Bulgaria so that I can just live a normal life. I think our colleagues in Western Europe would just laugh if they heard about what we earn. They wouldn't believe it. It's true, it's better to laugh than cry. But are we second-class European citizens? Are we bad tailors or dressmakers? Do we eat less than our colleagues in Western Europe? There is a big paradox in Bulgaria. We try to escape low wages, we run away from our bad living conditions and we head abroad to work in the UK, in France or elsewhere. But nobody from abroad wants to come and work here. And if a foreign entrepreneur wants to invest in Bulgaria, they are unable to find enough manpower. Around 40,000 people live in Gotsi Delshev and its surrounding villages. According to the town's mayor, some 2,500 people from the area are currently working abroad. Most are thought to be in Western Europe, employed in the farming, building and the health service sectors. We connect with one of them via video chat. Galina recently moved to the UK. Presently living in London, she left her family in Bulgaria to sew cheap sweaters instead of expensive suits. Dobrovecher, Kalina. Nice to speak to you. Uh, straightforward question, why did you leave Bulgaria? I felt like a machine, really, like a machine. You come home from work, you eat, you sleep three or four hours. I felt broken, as if huge rocks were on top of my back. What is the wage you got 
in Bulgaria. What is the wage you get today in the UK? The stress was huge in Bulgaria. I got 260 to 280 euros. Here in London, I get 1,800 euros per month. In Bulgaria, my employer didn't believe me when I was sick, although I had to have a drip feed and buy medicine to keep going. I've been in the UK for three months and already feel better. Back in Bulgaria, the workload was too much. As one of Pirintex's main customers, Hugo Boss regularly carries out social audits at the textile factory in Gotsidelsheb to evaluate operating procedures and working practices. The results are deemed to be good. Management also insists the company has an excellent reputation in Bulgaria compared to other firms where conditions are much worse. Vidin is one of 25 engineers on site. He knows every single machine inside out, having helped set up the factory for Purintex's German owner, Bertram Rollmann. In the early 90s, the factory was still in Greece. The entrepreneur, Mr. Rollmann, looked for an alternative site because at that time, the living and production costs rose in Greece, while they remained low here in Bulgaria. Everyone knows that there is a trend in the garment industry. Production sites move from countries with high costs to countries with low costs. Perintex was built on the remains of a radio factory. When Rollman invested, he was welcomed with open arms. The Bulgarian economy was in dire straits and garment production was seen as one way out of the hardship. In just a few years, the number of workers rose sharply to 3,500. Rollman's grandfather began a home-based tailoring business in Germany in 1922 and the family's first factory opened in 1965. Later production was moved to Greece and then Bulgaria, where it still exists today. The profits for companies in the garment industry are too low to enable them to pay a lot to their employees. As a result, for three years now, people have left in large numbers, migrating elsewhere. This has left its mark. In the past three years, on average, some 600 people have left our company every year, mostly heading to the United Kingdom, to Germany, some have gone to Sweden, and some even to Spain. It is so that for the rein producenten Bulgarian producers like ours get only about 5 to 7 percent of the retail price. That's not enough, actually. It's such a small part that people working in production, be it in Bulgaria, Romania, Serbia, Macedonia or Albania, can't build a decent life. On the one hand, international brands insist that international, let's say European standards, should be respected and implemented in regard to social conditions. On the other hand, those brands don't want to pay accordingly to meet those necessary requirements. Since 1990, some 1.5 million people have left Bulgaria. The country's current population stands at around 7 million. Despite the massive exodus, large numbers of Bulgarians continue to leave in a bid to find better paid work. We arranged to meet the local union leader, Kostadin again, and his wife, Zorka. Sorka left Perintex, citing the stressful working conditions. As an independent seamstress, she does not earn much more than she did before, but is thankful she can now work at her own pace. This new control system at Perintex is a type of piecemeal work system which is not good for anyone. We cannot earn more. This quota system urges us to work more and quicker. We don't have time to do what we need to do every hour. Therefore, the people become depressed, lose motivation and just think about leaving the factory. In my opinion, this piecemeal system was just put in place to control the workers. 
You cannot really boost productivity with this system. All this is not about controlling the work process, but about keeping an eye on the employees. All this is put in place to pay less to the employees. As a result, the productivity drops. Many locals say the low pay at the factory means they are forced to sell fruit and vegetables to make extra money. Then there are those who leave for the UK, France, Germany or elsewhere. It's winter time and you need a warm house. For that, I need about 600 euros for the whole winter season. That's two months' salary I need to save, just for heating. After that, not much money is left to buy food. You also have to pay for electricity, that's another 50 euros. If you want to offer an education to your children, if you want to save something for emergencies, if you want to go on holiday occasionally, well, it's just impossible with a textile factory's salary as your sole income. With those fruit trees, I hope to get the money together to pay for my children's education. The fruit trees are my insurance, somehow. Bulgaria's minimum wage is the lowest in the EU. Despite a rise of 10% in January, the current basic salary is only 286 euros per month. That's lower than the 440 euros in neighbouring Romania and way below the minimum wage in France, which currently stands at 1,500 euros. Ivan recently got a job as a caretaker at the town's gymnasium. At 20, it's his first full-time job. It's not easy to find well-paid work in Bulgaria. I graduated from a professional school together with 25 other classmates who specialised in IT. But none of us found what we were looking for. Nobody got a well-paid IT job. So, finally, I accepted this caretaker job. At least it's interesting. Ivan got the job through an EU programme which seeks to help young people without work find employment. The job, however, only pays the minimum wage. Bulgaria is the poorest country in the EU. You get one euro per hour, which means 10 euros per day. In Germany or France, 10 euros is what you get for each hour. But we get for one day's labour. In Western Europe, you earn in a single hour. In Bulgaria, it's just impossible to move out of the family home when you finish school. How is it possible to find a place of your own when your parents also earn just the minimum wage? After work, Ivan shows me around. In addition to liking Bulgarian pop music, the singer Shakira and heavy metal group Metallica, his dream is to travel. He also loves to play the lottery. Like many Bulgarians, the numbers game offers the chance, however slim, to escape the drudgery of everyday life. Well, not really lucky this day, maybe next time. What is your big dream? If I could win right now, I would definitely buy a new car and I would like to travel to explore ancient sites and treasures in the Arab world. Since Bulgaria joined the EU in 2007, the local authority of Gotsi Delsheb has received around 50 million euros. Most of that went towards upgrading infrastructure. The town's socialist mayor, however, insists more support is needed for small and medium-sized businesses in the area. Bulgaria is one of the poorest member states of the European Union. What has to be done to trigger a real change? There is a problem for those countries which recently joined the European Union. The problem is low incomes and the working poor. A great deal needs to be done to stimulate and to increase wages in these regions and countries. We need a revenue revolution. This kind of change would slow down internal migration in Europe. If we managed to trigger this revenue revolution, people would stay in Bulgaria and we could catch up with living standards in Western Europe. Low wages also mean low pensions. Now 80, Atlaza started working when she was just 15 years old. In her first job, she planted trees. 
After that, she got married and moved with her husband to the Soviet Union to work as a cook. She eventually returned to Bulgaria and found a job making zips in a garment factory. She stayed there until retirement. When food shopping, at Laza just buys the basics and always looks for special offers. She also makes ends meet by helping the local parish with its accounts. At Laza has a nephew in Spain and a niece in France, while her two children still live in Bulgaria. When I get my pension, around 150 euros, I have to pay around 50 euros for all the bills. Electricity, medicine. That means I just have 100 euros until the end of the month for daily expenses. When looking in the shop windows, I see a lot of goods I can't afford. Fortunately, my children help me out. Without the support, I wouldn't be able to survive. I'm poor as a church mouse. Thanks to my children, I have some heating so I won't fall sick. They buy the wood for heating. With my small pension, I can't afford to buy sausages and meat. Recently, I met two friends. They and their husbands are still working and are earning money. They bought meat and ham. With my pension, I can't afford to buy ham. Back at the factory, we ask about the prospects of raising wages and more broadly the future of Eastern Europe's textile industry, given global competition. On the whole, for Rollman, the outlook is gloomy. He claims textile producers in Bulgaria and Romania harbour ambitions to move production abroad. For now, he says he doesn't have such plans. We will stay here on this site. You don't give up such a factory with 1,800 staff just like that. The know-how we've built up here is precious to us. But it could happen, of course, that one day we'll be forced to open a second site in another country. That could be somewhere in Africa or in Central Asia. In order to get an alternative, to get a second leg, to keep our business going in the medium and long term. Rollman says he's exploring the possibility of opening a second site in either Senegal or Uzbekistan. In the meantime, local union members, with this year's European Parliament elections in mind, have their own ideas on what needs to be done to trigger change for the better. In order to get real change, the system needs to change. The piecemeal work needs to stop. Pay should only be based on the number of working hours. And we need a sectoral agreement for our particular industry. A colleague of mine working in France told me that they get paid nine and a half euros per hour. That's huge compared to us. We just earn peanuts. What can the European Union do for us? Well, they should fix a minimum rate for each working hour. And this hourly minimum sum should be implemented across the whole of the EU. We don't want double standards. We don't want a two-speed Europe. We want to be fully part of Europe and we want the EU to guarantee a European minimum wage. Prices are also the same in Europe. What has to change? I wish all the young people who left Bulgaria could come back home. I have one child, 21 years old, living in Germany for two years now. My dream is that my child will find a well-paid job in Bulgaria in order to make a decent living, rather than abroad. That's what I want.